I don't think that women can have a connection to God without a man explaining it to her. Some guys, like now I'm triggered. I have goosebumps because yeah. I'm like fully, you riled me up. <laughs> For Sneeko to say that, mm -hmm. I kind of understand him because I believe you when you just say oh it's just allergies no honestly 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 the allergies this season have been mm -hmm. effing me up it's been bad how y'all doing are allergies hereditary <laughs> my voice sounds so weird today <laughs> oh my god welcome back guys to another episode of the cousin connection podcast, podcast. and i might sound i might sound a little different today okay and we that's, gotta say what before we actually start what by the time you guys are watching this, oh yeah, Eid, Eid Mubarak. Mubarak. Where's the applause? Which uh, one is it? Uh, it's one of these. Nope. Damn. Wait. Nope. There we go. Eid Mubarak, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, it, it, let's just say the reason for this voice is because of an uh, accumulation of uh, a few things that have happened in the past few days. Like it, it's like small things you like you don't think about like mm. for my for my job I take a lot of calls and there was one day where I just took a significantly high amount of calls mm -hmm. so my voice and when you're fasting like that's a big no no like talking a lot yeah really adds on to it and I already felt it like my voice going and even a couple of days before that I was already dealing with like, a little bit of a like a sore throat and then uh, that was on Thursday and on Friday no I'm, I'm, I'm you know it's not that bad don't worry don't worry, don't worry. I, swear, I, I I can't say I swear but like you know I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's because I have allergies to like pollen I'm allergic to pollen I mean you know what? I have PTSD what? why really oh yeah I might have given you <laughs> I mean that thing a couple times <laughs> Amir <laughs> like after we had a full two day sleepover here yeah like we were Take, you know what we I were about like, to go home i feel and like he... it was everyone's <laughs> fault okay you should have taken better precautions okay we were not following the rules what do you mean we were <laughs> fine and then as i'm about to leave he goes <clears throat> my throat feels kind of funny and we were like i don't know um i'm pretty sure i gave everybody warning ahead of time no no, you you told us then, and we, yeah. we were like, oh, you know, it's because we were playing in like we mm, were playing outside. We were all in, in denial. <laughs> we were all in denial until you said that your head hurt. Then yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what'd you say? <laughs> but this, let's. Just, I don't think this is the case here. Okay, inshallah. Yeah, and on, on Friday, uh, inshallah. But on Friday, what happened on Friday? Oh yeah, um, mm -hmm. I had a presentation at work. Oh yeah, and like. For me, when I'm giving presentations, like especially of all the information I had to provide, I was going like ham for like an hour and a half, just destroying that voice. Because you know, I naturally project my. I voice. was literally I'm <laughs> laughing because I'm like, you give me the vibe of like when people present, they like yell like, yeah. unintentionally. Yeah, like like you, I any concert hall, you don't need mics. I could literally project my voice throughout the whole thing. You wouldn't need anything. We can't tell when we're recording. Yeah. But sometimes when I take this off and I actually hear what we sound like, yeah. we're so loud. We are, right? Especially you. Like, I'm just like, dang. <laughs> Our families don't even have to watch the episode. They just hear us the whole time. Exactly. It's like a free podcast. They, they, they're they the first uh, customers, not customers, first viewers of our live podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. But yeah, so that the presentation i already started like my throat was dry by the end of that and like my lips were dry i probably look like a mess giving that presentation everybody said Aww. i did well so i'm gonna take that as yeah. a win you know a win is a win and then of course at the end of the day it was the 27th night of ramadan so we had like a whole uh um should we tell them about the khatimat like what we do oh yeah like we have so let me so look it up while as hararis you know because we're here to you know to share people about our culture as well right so as hararis we have something called the uh, khatimat and uh, essentially like on the 27th of is to commemorate the 27th night of ramadan we'll um get together read quran uh and uh, make dua for you know people who have passed people who are sick and all that and then they'll actually make a, a certain type of coffee it's not a coffee it's like a tea it's like a milk tea the hashar kahwa yeah hashar kahwa mm -hmm. and um They'll make what's the bread called? Siri, Siri, and uh, it's like a sugar. Siri is the bread, right? Siri is the bread. Yeah, and Siri is like the bread. Butter, it's like a flat bread. Butter, sugar, coffee mixture. Yeah, and then on top of it, we put like uh, literal, like just roasted coffee beans, like full coffee beans. 
yeah, you know, when they say Ethiopia is, you know, the origin of coffee, you know, we really take it. <laughs> 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 but like we take the coffee beans, roast them, and then you put sugar, you mix sugar with water and you put that on top of it and you eat that like traditionally with just and you serve it to the community. And uh, yeah, well, that's what we did last night. But because of that, we were out late. And then like we did that before Taraweh and then we prayed Taraweh. And then after that, you know, speaking of Sohor Fest from last week, no, we didn't go to Sohor Fest, Sohor <laughs> Fest, but like we had our own little Sohor hangout where we went to Eggtastic. It's Eggstatic. Also, Sorry, I was reading up, I was reading up on the Khatimat, like yeah. So, um, in in our Harari culture, mm-hmm. we actually do the you know the seventeenth night of Ramadan, mm-hmm. um, to signify the uh, victory of uh, Prophet Muhammad oh, yeah. sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Battle of Badr. The Battle of Badr. So what they do is actually they, um. It said like they they read the Quran like the they complete the full Quran. Mm-hmm. So what sometimes what people will do is like they'll gather in a jama or like a group of friends. Yeah, and each one will like take um, a portion of the Quran that they would have read to oh, really? to say that like they all completed it together. Uh oh yeah, because then like I think it's like someone will read and then someone else will like continue from where they left off and continue from where they left left off. No. Yeah, and I think if I'm not mistaken, like, uh. Mahtam, like mm-hmm. in the, the gay sinan word means to complete something, if I'm not mistaken. But I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah, we got to bring, bring our parents on that. Yeah, <laughs> ask my dad. <laughs> but um, Got to go to a primary source for that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but then they also do this um, tradition mm-hmm. on uh, the 27th night um, in hopes of catching Laylatul Qadr. Yeah. I think you said that already, right? So sorry if I... I, I, didn't, I didn't mention that it's in hopes of catching Laylatul Qadr, but like that is another reason why mm-hmm. they do that. Um, what? But back to what you were saying. What was How like? we had our own little suhoor. Oh yeah, party. we had we went to Egg Static. Yeah. yeah. Was that your first time? Yeah, I've never been. What? What? Yeah, like I've I've heard about it a lot, but like anytime I've wanted to go, I've I've just gone to Mahas. I I per- honestly honestly, I don't know if this is controversial. I prefer Mahas. I don't know what it is. I like the vibe of Mahas. It's really small, very homey vibe. The food I've is has never missed for me. Like this food was good too. I had like a pulled beef sandwich. That was good. Like yeah, the, it was good. It, it was, was good. It reminded me of actually another spot in Toronto called Northern Smokes. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of food spots, Keith Lee's in the city, <laughs> and he actually went to Sumac. I saw. Yeah, he went to Sumac. And then I got in so Scarborough. mad. I in got Scarborough. mad because I'm like, that place is already so packed and busy. Yeah. Now it's just gonna be even worse. No, no, no. I feel like that that place. Like, do you think this he is has where like, this is where the Stush City capital or Stush capital city? You know, what's that name that the uh, Toronto gets a lot? Screwface City? Screwface City, sorry. Yeah, I was like, what's the... My bad, my bad. The Screwface City, I feel like this is where we'll kinda, it kind of benefits us. Because I feel like a lot of Toronto people are like, eh, but like, you know, we got our own spots kind of thing. Because there's so many food spots in Toronto that like, everybody who's going to know about Sumac already knows about Sumac. Yeah, it did actually go viral on TikTok mm-hmm. a while ago. Um, maybe so maybe for tourists. Happened. Maybe. Yeah, because I feel like Toronto's like, people say it's like up and coming. It's already been a big spot because gentrification is definitely going to like reach Toronto, right? Yeah. Or Scarborough, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It already is like in a way. Yeah. But uh, I feel like it's going to change in the next 10 to 20 years mm-hmm. significantly. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of people who typically would tour to or not tour, what do you call it? Uh, tourists who would come to Toronto, they would usually stay in the city, right? And maybe go to like, I don't know, Vaughan if they want to go to like Wonderland or whatever, which I don't even think that's a touristy thing. Maybe it is. I don't but, know. um, Maybe now the other destinations like maybe Mississauga, I mean, Mississauga yeah. or, or Scarborough might become like other touristy spots that people can go to. Because first off, Scarborough, I guess we, it, I don't know if it's considered part of Scarborough, but we have the beaches or like we have more quieter beaches. Like yeah. is Woodbine Beach part? Of, no, it's not part, no, of, that's Toronto part of Toronto still, right? Yeah. Uh, but we do have the Bluffs. And yeah. the Bluffs is also like a nice spot that touristy tourist pe- people can go to. Tourists can go to? Why do I call it tourist people? Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> i'm gonna blame it on the allergies yeah <laughs> oh but speaking of that allergy sorry we kind of uh got distracted there but a good distraction uh after i mean not after that before um the khatimat and all that when i first got to the musalla and we were like you know just initially i, was, I got there pretty early so no one was there the moment i got in i was leaking my nose I, I don't know who was there who that's why I think this was allergies because I was fine for the day mm. I had I had the dry not dry throat I was losing my voice from just like talking a lot but I never had any like nose issues the moment I stepped in there my nose was leaking everywhere like I it was embarrassing how much it was so it was leaking so much that like I had to 
people thought I was disrespecting them by not like walking up and saying hi. Like the dads were like, you normally say hi. Why don't you come and say hi? And it was mainly because I was running back and forth between trying to set up because I set up a lot of stuff for them and running to the washroom so I can blow my nose. Yeah, it was bad. Eventually it went away, but it would like come in waves throughout the night. If you're so sure that it's allergies, why don't you just be responsible and take allergy medicine? I should. I know. I know you don't normally take it because you kind of like, just deal with it. I think it's also because of the fact that we're fasting. Yeah, And true. typically I would like go out and get that during the day and like yeah. I just I, I didn't have the chance and you don't think about that. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll get it tonight. We'll see. You but should. Yeah. What? You said you should because this week we're getting like real spring weather. Like the oh, sun yeah. is out today. Yeah, it's finally warm So outside. Like exciting. I went on a walk and I almost didn't take my my like a running jacket not running jacket what your do you call windbreaker? it yeah my windbreaker didn't um, you learn your lesson last night what oh yeah that was also another <laughs> thing that probably added to the fact that i was that my nose was leaking was the fact that uh i only wore a t-shirt <laughs> no but wait, 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 wait okay okay before before you judge me okay the reason that i only wore a t-shirt was because uh i had a jacket and a sweater in the car mm. initially and later in the night i was gonna go and get it but because my dad had come earlier and like left earlier, he took my car. <laughs> and because he took my car, he took my clothes with the, with him. So for the rest of the night, including like at 1 or 2 a.m. when it's like the coldest of the night and we're out for Sahur, I had only a sweater on. I mean, a T-shirt on and like a little undershirt under that. But that's it. So, I, you know, I was I was getting hit from all angles. OK, but, yeah. you know, we're here. We're still alive. Alhamdulillah. OK. <laughs> 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 i only got a couple more days left of ramadan yeah it's kind of yeah. sad it's crazy how fast it went by like i was sad yesterday really like, it's the last friday yeah it, 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 and it does, but the weird thing is that like i know we mentioned this last week but it, it literally feels like it's been it came uh, last week and it's already gone yeah i know it's been the quickest ramadan i've ever felt in my life yeah i don't know it's because it's just as you get older there's so much more going on and you get so much so much more distracted. Like there's a lot more going on at work and there's you know, a lot of other things going on in our lives. So it just adds to the time. It's that, or but it's I also quick, feel like time feel quicker. Are we comparing it to like two, three years ago when we had COVID? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it is uh, too. Like Ramadan during COVID and yeah. we were like at home, didn't have group iftars. Exactly. Like, every single day you were, you know, yeah. at home and that, that Ramadan felt very long. Yeah, you know what? It, but honestly, I loved those Ramadans. So did a lot I. More. I don't, because I guess because you didn't have distractions. Yeah. You couldn't go out you to any so spots late at night. Yeah, you had a lot more time yeah, to I, kind of I, focus I, on the things that are important to you. Those are some good. Uh, now I miss that mm -hmm. vibe. Now I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you aren't Muslim and you haven't fasted Ramadan before, like mm -hmm. you may not actually understand or be able to relate to what we're saying. But think of it this way. For Muslims, Ramadan is that time of the year where, mm -hmm. you know, when your heart aches and you're you're in dire need of that spirituality and that connection to God and your religion, mm -hmm. Ramadan just happens to come around like the most perfect time of the year every single time. Yeah. And so your heart just feels at ease. Like you just feel comforted. You feel a lot more spiritual than you normally do. You, mm -hmm. you really push yourself and try to... Um, create habits that you don't normally do mm -hmm. um, with the hopes that inshallah you kind of keep those habits going forward even outside of the month yeah so like that's why to us it means so much um yeah and i feel like but yeah even, even back then it was h easier to keep those habits because not much changed before or after like you were stuck in the house before Ramadan, you were stuck the house during Ramadan, you were stuck <laughs> in the house after Ramadan. That's very true. <laughs> so like whatever habits you built during Ramadan, like it's not like there's any added distractions that could happen after Ramadan. Like you're right. still, no one's gonna be still meeting up. Like you're not gonna be you went out for food spots as often, or That's or true. doing <laughs> things or events and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know every challenge or like every struggle you're faced with is like an opportunity for you to gain reward from it right because like, yeah absolutely yeah the, the fact that you chose to do good or at least you you tried to do better even when you're faced with like some type of struggle that that's rewardable in itself so yeah i think that's another like a silver lining of this whole whole, whole situation yeah no definitely mm -hmm. like you know as sad as we are we can only like you know make dua that um mm -hmm. we get to see another ramadan next year yeah, inshallah. If yeah. you're watching this while you're having uh, your iftar or suhoor, take a drink of water every time well, we said Ramadan. Well, that, that won't be the Just case. kidding, it's going to yeah. be. 
<laughs> literally this is coming out if yeah like either one or two days after <laughs> ramadan <laughs> yeah hopefully i actually have time to edit it too because all the things going on i mean we were recording a day earlier than usual so maybe you will oh yeah we are i yeah. forgot what day it was yeah. Shoot. i don't know why yesterday felt, felt like, like a saturday, a saturday. did it yeah, not yeah i got that even though we were at work yeah yeah i felt that vibe like it, it literally felt like a different day and technically because it was in later in the night I guess. <laughs> it was but like i think it's because we spent so much time and like there were so many things that we did that night uh and then the fact that we went out afterwards yeah. is all that came together and like also because um can i yeah aisha is also in town yeah like all of that all together with the whole family being together like just the vibes in general made it mm. seem like it was a weekend in itself yeah because we did a lot but That's yeah true. today we'll probably today we think we'll feel a little bit more chill i think so mm -hmm. but we'll see. yeah we'll see and you know <clears throat> oh my god I know I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know when you get like a little bit of like phlegm? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's all it was. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> In other news. <laughs> um, what do you call it again? <clears throat> oh, and one thing I actually wanted to mention is that like I feel like because of how quick Ramadan was this time, getting back to like normal business won't feel as hard. Because back in the day, I don't know what, maybe this is just me personally, but whenever Ramadan happened, yeah, like... Because it was such a change in lifestyle, mm -hmm. it felt like coming back to like your normal life of like, you know, uh, eating during the day and getting used to that. Yeah. It won't feel as uh, not drastic. What, when, when something I hate too hard, um, jarring, it won't feel as jarring as it used to. Or maybe that's just a factor of like the fact that you're getting used to it. You're getting older. You've done it so many times now that you kind of get used to the, the, the routine of getting back to back into it. Yeah, but... Also, if you're a girl, you're kind of used to the switching. Oh, on yeah, off. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about an enemy. <laughs> I think it hits you guys more. Huh? It hits you guys more because yeah, exactly. you're fasting a 30 day straight. Yeah. Yeah. But then there's also like, um, there's show I lead as well. So, like, you mm -hmm. know, after Ramadan, there's a few days after that. Uh, you know, I don't always do it, but, you know, maybe this year I'll do it. Just like, okay. <laughs> well, if your body's already used to the fasting. Yeah, but know? everybody's saying that I look like I got smaller or something. I know. I, 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 Did I? I don't even know. I wasn't Can near tell? you yesterday, but, like, yeah. I overheard someone saying that to you. Yeah. And I heard the heartbreak in your voice. You were yeah, like, Yeah, I was yeah? like, did I? Did I've I? been eating all the same food. I've been still going to the gym. I think not it's not as often, but still. It's because you wore, like, a more form-fitting T-shirt yesterday. Mm -hmm. And usually you wear, like, sweaters. So maybe that's yeah, why. that's what it was. And the thing is, I didn't even mean to wear that. Like, I didn't realize because that T-shirt I hadn't worn it in so long <laughs> that I've gotten bigger since then. <laughs> it was it was pretty tight. Yeah, I was, it was like, pretty tight. What you trying to do? <laughs> that's the thing. And it also had the undershirt on on uh, like under it. Mm. And I usually don't wear an undershirt with that shirt. So maybe like the accommodation of that. Maybe. Um, <laughs> that's why I wanted to go and change the sweater as well. But yeah, whatever, you know. Hindsight is, 2020. Whatever. It is what it is. It's yeah. okay. And um, but yeah, so you know, inshallah um all of you guys had a successful ramadan this year yeah and we're able to make the most of it and uh we'll be able to do the same next year inshallah inshallah mm -hmm. and maybe next year we'll have an even better well we hopefully we will have a better um ramadan series maybe with some guests oh yes or yeah. something we got we got to start producing a little bit more. We'll, we'll plan it out months <laughs> in advance yeah exactly be, you know we'll we'll save it for next year inshallah mm, inshallah um but in more important news, mm -hmm. uh, a big thing that happened this year, you know, we like to give updates on what's happening in Gaza and in, in, in Palestine in general. And this year, I mean, this week, uh, the biggest news, of course, was what happened to the World uh, Food Kitchen workers. Yeah. Where they were traveling in clearly marked vehicles from southern to northern Gaza to feed the people there who are currently going through a famine, basically. And uh, there were... All three vehicles were had direct strikes done to them, unaliving all seven <laughs> of the foreign aid workers. Yeah. And I think that foreign word is probably the reason that it's been the biggest story or the biggest headline currently right. in all news agencies. Because everyone knows that for the most part, all these news, uh, mainstream news uh, agencies don't really care about Palestinian people or any yeah, people of minority, yeah. in, mi minorities in general. But the fact that this was a very clear strike on international aid workers yeah. who were actually working with the IOF or the IDF or whatever and uh, gave them their, clear, their routes, told them exactly where they're going. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, this was the only... 
uh, aiding or food aiding agency that was uh, approved by the is not real government. So like literally this, the, there is no excuse for why this happened. Right. They try to come excuse, say we say you made a mistake, but like how many other mistakes have they made already at this point? Quote unquote mistakes that they made at this point. And it's so like you, even when you see the vehicles, when you see the pictures of the vehicles, there's literally a hole. You could not get more direct with how precise these these uh, these strikes were. Right. It was directly like into I think like the passenger seat of the vehicle, a direct hole into it. You, it's not like they hit the ground around it and the vehicle flipped. They hit them directly, and it's and the series of events makes it even makes us more um, shows us more how intentional this was because i believe there is the three separate strikes but they happen in sequence so like uh they were they were speed they were driving in uh three vehicles i believe the first one in the back got hit then uh the people who survived from that one came out and started they tried to save whoever was there they ran to the next vehicle that next vehicle was hit and this is all taking sp- in a place in within a span of like three kilometers and then they got out of the second vehicle whoever survived from that one ran to the, to the third vehicle and that was where they eventually unalived everyone who was part of that um the group crew convoy yeah basically and these were armored vehicles too so they like th- there's no excuse for this and now even the people who were very who were trying to make excuses or yeah. very pro uh these not real side even they are trying to like rationalize how this could be how could this how this could have happened and I, they and they have no answers i was surprised to see trudeau speaking up again yeah or not speaking up against but like just calling out the fact that one of the volunteers was a canadian mm-hmm. And it's interesting because you're only willing to speak up because it's a Canadian mm-hmm. life. But what about all the Palestinian lives? Yeah. What about all the Canadians who have Palestinian family members mm-hmm. who are either displaced, who have been <laughs> unalived, who um, have are being tor- tortured currently? Like, mm-hmm. it's very, it's very interesting. And and also, it's like there are also Canadian, like actual Canadian citizens who are still stuck. Yeah. In uh rafa or like in in gaza in general Mm -hmm. so the fact they don't even uh speak out about that alone and that's been happening since october 7th right but now the moment that a you know basically a white person yeah or a person who yeah basically a white person is 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 killed in this Mm -hmm. that's when they start speaking up and start saying this is not right and like they they, of course we we told them when we mentioned earlier how they already called for a ceasefire but like now it's like they're using more direct like uh condemnations towards that government yeah right so it's very clear like what thirty five thousand was not enough for them to start speaking up they had to seven more people yeah that's when they start speaking up and just because of who those people were sometimes like even if something is so blatantly clear to mm. some of us it'll it takes like more than you holding up a mirror to show yeah. them like like look this is what the truth actually mm-hmm. is i don't know sometimes because you just it, it also exposes the fact that they do know what the truth is right of course they do but now they're getting probably pressure from these organizations where who are losing their members because yeah. the guy who owns that uh, organization, he actually came out and directly said that they intentionally did this. Yeah. They did this. And uh, people are like, why would they do this? Like people who are trying to defend, they're like, why would they do this? This doesn't make any sense. And uh, people, they try to say this conspiracy, but no, it's clear that they did this because they want to discourage any people from giving aid to the, um, the Palestinians. to Palestinians, right? They never wanted and they're using them to food get as a as a weapon of war, essentially. What what did you say? I was just gonna say they never wanted them to get the aid. They never wanted them to get the food, the mm-hmm. health care, the supplies that they need. Like mm-hmm. any time they would kind of pretend and play along. Yeah. Even if they allowed one or two trucks in that had the food, mm-hmm. they would then just like can we use the bomb? AKA mm-hmm. the flower masker. Yeah, mm-hmm. like they would just. It, it doesn't make any sense. And for anyone that's trying to defend it at this point, mm-hmm. like at this point, you're just supporting genocide. Like yeah. it is what it is. And it's very unfortunate. I feel like there's still a lot of momentum, but then there are also people that are like, you know, kind of reaching that. Well, what are we going to do? Yeah, at- the exhaustion stage where they're like, yeah, how much more can we do? Yeah. And, you know, mm-hmm. don't give up. It, it's still we still I mean, by the time you're listening to this, it's after Ramadan. But mm-hmm. 
continue to make your du'a. Who's to say that your du'a your du'a doesn't get answered outside of Ramadan, right? You never know. Yeah. So just continue to pray for a free Palestine one day. Yeah, inshallah they will be free. Yeah. But um, this is like it, even even with a free Palestine, like someone has to answer for all these things that are going on, right? Like, yeah, it's I don't know what the solution is going to be in that because. Uh, if they want that solution, they're at least a West quote unquote solution is to have a two, uh, what do they call it? A two state solution. Yes, I know yeah. what you're talking about. But I think I don't know if that's the word. It might be. Yeah, a two state solution, or maybe make it one state. I'm not sure exactly. They, I think they've been changing their tone recently, but like, how I don't know how these people are going to be able to even live next to people yeah. who have intentionally done these things, right? Especially with the stories coming out of the mentality of a lot of these soldiers who are going into the 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 soldiers are sending in and coming out like their mentality just from the videos you're seeing of them speaking about how they yeah they they view these people these palestinian people right Mm -hmm. they don't even view them as human they don't it's a game to them a lot of them are like and they look this these soldiers look so young Mm -hmm. and when they're smiling and saying like yeah i did this and Mm -hmm. i'm just like Wow, you're sick in the head. Yeah, there's a. I think there was actually a, a TikToker. Yes, that I've I seen. You've seen him, about. right? Mm-hmm. Like he'll first get them in by being like super, like positive, and be like, "Oh my god!" Like he, he speaks exactly. He's like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you guys are like fighting out there. Like, what's going on? Can you like give us some details on what's?" This? And then when they start speaking about how they're um what they're doing to the mm. palestinian people he starts like turning i was like wow you must have felt really great about that right and they'll actually say yeah we loved it blah blah, blah like th- and then eventually he turns on them and then it turns into like a little argument and then usually on the other end the soldiers will just cut off the video for them they're like ah now we got we got bamboozled right? yeah <laughs> right? that's true but it, it, he's thankfully like exposing the mentality of a lot of these people who are in the streets and it's horrible every day the, the stories you're hearing about what's going on mm-hmm. it gets you don't think it can get worse and it gets even worse. I know. So it's disheartening to hear that. But again, the Palestinian people themselves are also the most resilient people I've ever seen in my life. So that's, um, unfortunately they're kind of being faced with this, but they're also the best examples of, um, how you hold on to your faith, even in like the most dire of times. Yeah. And which is going back to how we mentioned, like there's a lot of people who are seeing this and turning to Islam for that. Yeah. Um, and, and, I'm sure you saw the the mm-hmm. videos and pictures by now, but on the 27th night, um, mm-hmm. they were at the Dome of the Rock in the Aqsa compound. Yeah, I think it was something like 200,000 people praying mm-hmm. Tarawih. Like, I was like, wow! Like the fact yeah. that they're still showing up, like nothing is gonna stop them, which yeah. is mashallah, just like very beautiful to see. And like, yeah, the fact that they were making du'a in unison, like it was just so beautiful. Yeah, it was very beautiful. So, inshallah. We'll see a free Palestine. Inshallah. And, um, ya Rab. <laughs> ya Rab. And, and I hope this is the last time we have to give some negative news yeah. that's going on. Because yeah. unfortunately, because of that, um, the aid workers, the, the, that aid agency left, yeah. essentially, right? Yeah. Which essentially they got their win. Mm-hmm. It's not real, got their win in that case. And a lot of other agencies are kind of like being a lot more stand not stand like cautious. Off, cautious now, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. This is maybe just a step back where like that one step back you take to take two steps forward. Mm. Yeah. So uh, because there's a lot more eyes on this now. Yeah. Uh, even though it took this long, uh, we may see resolution sooner than sooner rather than later. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. Um, okay. So in other news, I want to clear up some opinions. I want to clear up some opinions from last week ep- last week's episode. Right, we we like got we got we got a lot of you know replies mm. from it. Some people. Uh, we're kind of giving a little bit of pushback, mm-hmm. specifically on the comment I made uh, in regards to um, one TikToker who said that, like, the things that are happening in one part of the world, like the, maybe the sins of people that are happening in one part of the world are co- directly correlated to the uh, punishments that are currently, or not punishments, but the things that are happening to uh, people in the other part of the world, like negative things like what's happening to the people in Gaza is directly related to the Suhoor Fest in this Mm. case specifically. Mm -hmm. Right. And he was making that connection um, with no real like reference or like backing in any way. And it was refuted by a lot of people. But like when I mentioned that extremism was 
kind of growing online. It's more like extremist takes. Like I didn't think that he himself is an extremist. Yeah, the opinion that he but shared. the opinion that he shared, in my opinion, because it's still my opinion, was extreme. Yeah, and de- like and and to give other examples of things that you might agree with more, the people who gave me that pushback is like when people started saying to um wear like a jacket under your abaya yeah that's extreme that would be an extremist thing to say or extreme thing to say yeah i i uh i actually responded to Mm -hmm. a couple of the comments i think sometimes when you either are watching the clips that we make on tiktok or Mm -hmm. instagram with no other context you just watch that little bit you think you might know the full context of what we're talking about but usually Mm -hmm. you don't and then people are quick to make that judgment but we make these clips with that in mind yeah and so we're also prepared to further explain if needed and so i responded to a lot of the comments Mm -hmm. um and you know one of the comments that had the issue with you using the term extremism said that there's already such a negative connotation around that word in relation to muslims Mm -hmm. and so i i think that's why i i I understand why they thought that yeah and so i had to clarify i was like first of all like Amir's intention behind using the word extremism Mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the connotation that the West has put on the word extremism in relation to Muslims. Exactly. You know, so I had to clarify that. Mm -hmm. She actually understood and was like, okay, you know what? That makes sense. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. But just generally for people who thought that I was calling them extremists. Yeah. It's more of their, the opinions that certain opinions that they're giving out are extreme. Like, I, I mentioned the abaya under the, uh, the jacket under the, the abaya. jacket under the abaya or even the one i don't know if we mentioned that one but like uh where the backpacks should be also worn under the abaya well i never yeah, saw that that was also another opinion they said that because when you're wearing a backpack it shows the shape of yeah. your body okay and then wearing it under your abaya is only going to make it tighter huh uh <laughs> like, no but like it'll take it away from you know the certain parts which, which completely negates the fact that mm. in general men should be lowering their gaze yeah. Right, how how you speak about these things like we mentioned last time requires a lot of wisdom right mm. and when you ask them for the sources of where they're getting this information a lot of the times they're taking they're taking whatever that scholar or whatever said out of context yeah and they're taking it in the most um least charitable way possible and using that against women because unfortunately like we mentioned before there's a lot of connections between the red pill community and the current like male muslim influencer online discourse Mm. you know that very specific niche yeah a lot of the topics that they speak about are usually directed towards either women or relationships with women do you think they do that because they know that it's it's a controversial topic and it's gonna get a lot of attention whether positive or negative or do you think they yeah, really it, do it, believe in it that? gets it gets the views maybe the person in their mind has rationalized it saying that they believe they're doing it for the benefit of the community but when you see certain numbers go up like your mind can rationalize anything mm. if you see your pockets being filled a lot more your mind can start rationalizing that what you're doing like they say uh what's that saying again the road to hell is paved with good intentions Mm. and this and a lot of the online reactions that you're seeing a lot of the online opinions that you're seeing are like the best examples of that right i'm not saying that they're going to go to hell even though a lot of the times in a lot of some of the videos that i've seen of these uh people who are very opinionated and give these type of opinions towards either women or just people muslims in general ha- are telling them that you are going to hell for this yeah they like who are you that. first off to say that like you can say that the judgment for a person who's done this and continues mm-hmm. to do this is that but if you say this person is definitely going to hell or is is going to hell that's in my opinion that's another part of extremism or extremism that's going online an extreme opinion that's the thing though like uh people can have extremist ideologies and views mm-hmm. what makes them an extremist is like when they actually act upon it exactly yeah. So so there there's a difference for any of y'all that are confused. Mm-hmm. You can you can live your day-to-day life but have these thoughts in your mind and then never act on it. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that you're an extremist in that way. Mm-hmm. I would just say you have extremist ideologies. The yeah. minute you act on it though and you're like oh like you start forcing people to do those yeah, things. Yeah. Then that's a, a whole other ball game. Exactly. Um and I think another thing 
that's related to another topic I was going to speak about is like platforming. When I speak about red pill, it's like platforming other uh, red pill people in the red pill community. So like um, an example of that would be like, actually, you know what? Maybe, maybe I, I, I sort of see what they're trying to do in this case. But recently there was actually, do you, I think I've spoken about them fresh and fit. Yeah. Do you know Muhammad Hijab? Yeah. He's like, he's very popular online these days. He's yeah. has, he's been growing his, his, his uh, popularity recently a lot because originally he like became very popular for his debates on like speaker's corner. And now he's been going on other podcasts who both Muslim and non-Muslim podcasts. And essentially he's doing a good thing by trying to spread the, spread the dawah or uh, he's, he's, um, he's spreading the knowledge, spreading the knowledge mm -hmm. of Islam uh, to an audience that might probably not might not know anything about Islam, right? So that's actually a good thing. But he actually went on Fresh and Fit recently. And uh, where I disagree sometimes is where they say that I agree with some of your opinions. When they start saying, like, I agree with some of your opinions. and the th and But they have to be very careful when they say that, in my opinion. Of course, I'm saying all this is my opinion, is that they have to, when they say that, be very specific mm, with, what, with you agree with. what you agree with. Because someone could quickly take that out of context. Yeah. They might like, like when we make clips, if you don't have the whole context, mm -hmm. like it can make someone sound like uh, a villain or a hero. It can, mm -hmm. it can make you sound like uh, an extremist and someone who's pretty moderate or very liberal. Uh, liberal. So context is everything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So just be very specific when you mention these things. Right. And even if you are there, people are going to take you out of context, but it's harder to do that. If you, if you just make sure to be very careful with how you, um, try and like give an all in all of branch to someone you may not agree with totally. You know, there, there's like an art to doing that though, mm -hmm. because <clears throat> you can, it's like, uh, what's that guy that you like? The bald guy, Who? Joe Rogan. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know, know how recently he, I haven't been the biggest fan of him, but yeah. Right. But mm -hmm. like, you know, when you've talked about his podcast before, mm -hmm. you, you you usually say he invites people from all walks of life, even yeah. if he doesn't necessarily agree with their views, ideologies, yeah. their views. Like he just wants to kind of like hear Have what they... Have a conversation. They, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so even if that was the case for us, where we invited someone who is totally not our vibe, not our demographic, mm -hmm. but for some reason we wanted to give them the space to say what they have to say... Mm -hmm we can have that conversation and still agree to disagree and yeah. say, you know what? Like those are your beliefs. That's on you. We don't believe that, but we were willing to have this conversation with you, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and it's important to challenge, like if you're going to bring them on, make sure you have your points like down pat Yeah. because if someone is very like, if, if they have an opinion, I don't, they don't agree with, but they also have like very, a, very good counterpoints, mm. at least in their eyes, or at least to the public, it might seem like very good counterpoints to, um, essentially make you sound like the wrong, who, who the person who has a wrong opinion in that case, then, uh, you may actually start exposing your audience to someone that you don't agree with and they might actually follow them instead. Right. Agreed. Because, Someone can have a bad opinion, but if they're really good or not opinion, but yeah, a bad opinion. But if they're really good at really good at um, debating that opinion and you may have a very good or like the the true opinion or like the truth, be, you might have the truth. But if you're not good at uh, protect, not protecting, uh, debating that truth and like you have all the points for why they might be wrong, a person who's really good at debating may actually make you look like the person, who, the wrong person, the person who's actually speaking uh falsehood in that case so that is it's a very they always say it's always mm -hmm. how you say it mm -hmm. like if you convey your message with confidence yeah and um not a place from defense like you're you're confident and you're calm when you're explaining what you're explaining mm -hmm. um that usually resonates with people more than if you were on the defense from the jump mm -hmm. and you're just like well no, no 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 and then you're combative and it's just yeah it ain't a good look honey exactly so um that's been a big thing and mm -hmm. like i mentioned there is actually recently when i speak when i'm speaking about red pillars in general yeah so uh, i think i've spoken about him before but you know a guy named sneeko yeah i've heard of him yeah he's he's actually alhamdulillah he's someone who was he embraced islam yeah right? he embraced islam recently yeah or actually he embraced islam maybe last year okay. but he's been going on this like he's been documenting his journey online of him kind of like exploring uh, f finding out more about Islam mm. and like connecting with different uh, Muslim influencers and trying to gain as much knowledge as he can 
uh, of course, there are certain people he speaks to that I com- completely don't agree with. Like, because recently he actually interviewed, uh, do you know Faris Hamidi? The guy oh, yeah. who's very pro, uh, okay, maybe it's harsh to say pro is not real, but like essentially is because he's saying like don't boycott essentially. He's mm-hmm. the guy who said that. Yeah. He interviewed him and I feel like that's kind of dangerous. You know, everyone, anyone can do whatever they want. They're adults, but like it's dangerous because this person who he doesn't have as much knowledge. He's still very like to the point where he was recently asked, do you know what Al-Aqsa is? And he didn't know what Al-Aqsa was, right? So he's very new to a lot of this, right? So I hope that the people who are guiding him and like um, connecting into these people are also telling them like, okay, here are the counterpoints to why they're wrong in these cases and stuff. And like he's getting some good guidance from someone because right now it seems like he's kind of doing this all alone. Mm. And that can be very dangerous because that can also lead to extremism in a way. Yeah. So or even someone to eventually seeing like all the contradictions yeah and it could turn him away from yeah islam. turn him away from islam they're not real contradictions because they're just someone who's giving him proper improper information essentially right yeah so uh that can be very dangerous but recently to show how much he still has to learn he came out with a comment i actually want to watch have you watch the video let me see if i can pull it up here okay i don't think that women can have a connection to god without a man explaining it to her I don't. Well, you had the man who's the prophet Muhammad so explaining Yeah, like would a woman really pick up the Quran and uh, take her shahada on her own ever? Okay, so that's that's the clip that was went around in this, and then another a TikToker replied to that to that clip, but essentially he was just saying that like, I, well, you saw the video. I'm gonna put it up here anyways. But what's your initial reaction to that comment? Did you not see my face? Yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think your like... face said a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. <sighs> That opinion alone mm-hmm. screams red pill. It does. Um, what's the term? Red uh, pill community. Red pill. Red pill logic, or yeah. Yeah, like. Listen. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, we will always show Muslims will always show gratitude, mm-hmm. thankfulness, um, and love to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Without his guidance man or woman none of us would be here Mm -hmm. if you really think about it and that's all because allah willed for us to be under his ummah the best Mm -hmm. the best of all creations like people some guys like now i'm triggered i have goosebumps because i'm like fully (laughs) you riled me up (laughs) i just it makes me upset because Mm -hmm. they are i know exactly the type of mentality they have they're using the fact that the prophet was a man Mm -hmm. and the fact that the because he was a man and he guided everyone guided his ummah to islam mm-hmm. and the fact that you know 1400 years 1400 plus plus years later mm-hmm. islam is one of the fastest growing religions with like over two billion people in the world yeah and because the prophet was a man mm-hmm. he's like oh yeah women wouldn't be able to understand islam you wouldn't have been able to understand islam mm-hmm. either bro like yeah. what but, do you mean but the reason that you are coming to that opinion is because uh you probably saw it in the video but this is actually a video f- the clip taken out of a podcast that Ali Dawa puts together. Yeah. And he, and he, him, it was Ali Dawa on that podcast, uh, Muhammad Hijab. And there's another guy from LA. I'm not, I forget his name, but he's like a preacher, a Muslim. Uh, he spreads Dawa in, in LA and tries to convert people in, in America. And, uh, does he Sneko. with that mentality? What? Does he with that mentality? Like, Who? Whoever is that guy is trying no, to. No, no, that's not Seiko. The, oh. uh, there's another guy that you didn't see. They're on the other side. Of, you didn't see them in the clip itself. Okay. Yeah. So I, when I first saw that, because nowadays, especially after some recent reactions that I've had, I'm like, you know what? Let me start watching the full context. Because like we mentioned earlier, things yeah. can be taken out of context from the video, right? I guess. So, sure. And like Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab are like very popular and have a lot of like respect online from the Muslim community. Do they? Uh, okay. like from, I don't know from, anymore. They have a lot of influence. Sorry. In the Muslim community. In, in the online Muslim discourse. Debatable, but okay. Okay. But, but. Okay, so because they have large following, pretty fo- large I know, followings. I know. But so I was like, okay, I have to watch the full clip. I have to watch the full, not episode, but that section of it, right? To yeah. see exactly what the reaction was. Because sure, for Sneeko to say that, mm-hmm. I kind of understand him because he's coming from, uh, he was very like red pill brained, right? Mm. So for him to still have some of these opinions, that's expected in a way. But now i wanted to see what the reaction to that was right 
So initially in the clip, you kind of see that Muhammad Hijab replies like, oh yeah, if you mean in the context that like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought Islam to the Ummah, right? So technically it would be both men and women yeah. would have been guided without him, right? But um, when I watched the full clip, the guys, when they saw, heard him say that, they were first initially confused. They tried to like rationalize it in a way being like try to give him the most charitable um the benefit of the doubt. The benefit of the doubt of how what he's me- saying there. But he kind of doubled, d- doubles down on it, right? Because they're saying, oh, yeah, you mean like um, um, from the Prophet Muhammad's perspective or the prophets, all of them were men? You mean from that perspective? And he's like, no, I mean like... He's insulting women's intelligence? Or he's essentially saying that like, like women only would convert if it was to pursue a man, essentially. And like, because initially before that conversation, they were speaking about like getting married, like marriage and that topic in general and how Sneeko, because he comes from a very, he comes from Miami, right? And he's interacting with a lot of women who are not Muslim. And when he's pursuing them, they'll be like, oh yeah, well totally, I'll totally convert to Islam for you. And that's like the mentality that he's had because all the women that he's interacted with have told him that. So he's just assumed that all women are like that. Like they are very floozy with their, not floozy? Like they're very loose with their faith and they're like willing to change faith for a man. So that's the context that that's the decision, the anecdotal evidence he's using to come up with that opinion. And Ali Dawa eventually was like, yeah, you know, like, oh, you mean like, yeah. And then he starts speaking about how like that's why um, men are allowed to marry like women of other faith because they have so much influence in the religion of the home i guess so even though they are marrying maybe they can marry jewish or christian women or people of the book the context or not the context but the like uh underlying context of that is that like eventually you might convince them to convert to islam by marrying them and that's like a benefit to the ummah in general and uh, but then sneeko just doubles down eventually or, or sort of changes a little bit of his tone and says like, yeah, you know, like whenever women are trying to learn about Islam, they usually go to like a sheikh or like some type of scholar who's most likely a male. Completely like discrediting the fact that there are a lot of sheikhs as, as well. And like... Some of the most in- influential Muslims in mm-hmm. Islamic history are women. Yeah, exactly. What about all the wives of the prophet? Exactly, <laughs> like, right? So... Okay. Uh, so... so they tried to be as charitable, but you could still still see. I wish that they gave him more pushback, but they're being charitable. And eventually they kind of like tried to switch it to another topic because they realized how bad that sounded. At know. least in my opinion, I believe they realized how bad that sounded and kind of tried to push on this to another subject. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with them acting that way is considered charitable. I think, mm-hmm. you know, when when you're dealing with new Muslims who they've gone their entire life Mm-hmm. Uh, believing or maybe learning ideologies that were not Islamic. Yeah. One of the first things after they've become Muslim that you really should focus on are like traits of wisdom mm-hmm. and, you know, knowing when to speak and share certain opinions. Yeah. Just because you have an opinion does not mean you have to share but, it. But this also goes back to the thing of like platforming people. I feel like it's okay. Maybe you, you platform these people, but you have to be very prepared to like push back really hard when they yeah. say things that are very inflammatory like that or very wrong like that. And I don't know the level of knowledge that Muhammad Hijab mm-hmm. or um, Ali Dawa have. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know how much knowledge they have. Yeah, because much... I believe Ali Dawa is also a, com- a convert. Like, he's converted to Islam as well. Oh, did he? Yeah. He, had, he has a whole story about, like, how he converted. He converted yeah. pretty, like, in his 20s or, like, 18. Like, when he he's a little older. Yeah. Okay. But, like, my thing is that if you're going to invite people like that on your platform Mm -hmm. where you know you're pretty much broadcasting it to whoever wants to watch yeah like you said like be prepared to actually have the correct points and Mm -hmm. correct them but like also is that what you want to like is that what sneeko wants like does Mm -hmm. he want to be debating these types of things online like you should in general Mm -hmm. when you're dealing with a new muslim you should always have more mercy on them than you would like you should have mercy on Muslims mm-hmm. in general, but when it's someone that's new mm-hmm. and they're sharing their opinions, sometimes they genuinely just don't know and they think it's like this because of what they may have seen or come mm-hmm. across without any context, right? Yeah. But if they're just gonna give him this platform, he says what he wants to say, and then they're too afraid to like. But I think it's I think it's like 
they're doing a calculation in their head. They're like, because Sneaku comes with his own large platform, right? Yeah. So they're doing maybe the calculation in their head of being like, okay, we can, if we have him on, even though he's still a new Muslim and still learning and like he could say things wrong here and there, by having him on our platform, we can uh, at least influence the people that are following him. And they see, when they do that calculation in their head, they're like, it's worth that maybe the backlash we might get because in their eyes, it will at least introduce more people to Islam and maybe convert more people. They're not going it, I'm not saying it. that they're, they're wrong. Not I'm not, I'm not saying that they're right. But yeah, they're just not going about it. And like, if you're trying to actually bring yeah. people to Islam, there are so many better ways of doing it. Yeah. Maybe, who knows? I could be wrong. And maybe when the camera switched off, they actually had a very meaningful heart to heart with him and explained Islam in the way that it should be. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, but that should, I, 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 my personal belief is that they should do a lot of the, that like, uh, work on him, like yeah. for teaching him. If um, they genuinely loved him for the sake yeah, of Allah. They would do this, yeah, they wouldn't, pla- they wouldn't put him online like this. I agree. Basically to be not, f- um, uh, eaten alive by like the audience yeah like that's a saying i believe yeah so yeah yeah (laughs) it can be it can be very dangerous to have someone like that online and they should be a lot more careful and maybe Mm. a little more protective like teach him first before bringing him online like that so that was something i saw online Uh, i want whatever i want to hear what you guys have to what what your thoughts are on that yeah like do you guys watch Mm -hmm. muhammad hijab or ali dawa or sneeko like if you guys are fans or you or maybe not fans, but you've seen some of their content mm-hmm. before. I actually have never watched a full episode. Maybe I Me should. neither. I haven't watched a full episode, but I watch clips like full clips. Usually whenever I see a clip, I'll go and watch the full thing just to see what the context is. Mm-hmm. If you guys do happen to watch it and, mm-hmm. and you have opinions on it, please share with us because yeah. I... I don't know. Amir triggered me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they're really big in the UK. So if there are any UK listeners, yeah. maybe let us give us some insight. Like, are these guys really big in the UK? Because I have a feeling that they're lar- they're bigger in the UK than they are in the in North, the America. North America in general. Yeah. 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 So let us know. Okay. Yeah. So before we end the podcast, I wanted to actually uh, respond to some comments mm-hmm. from two episodes ago. I kind of responded to generally what the comments were from last week's episode. Yeah. I forgot to take screenshots uh, for last week's episode. So I'll do that for next episode. (laughs) But uh, in regards to last week's episode, we had some pretty long comments. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, these people took the time to write these down. So I'm going to take the time to read it out for you guys uh, because I think that's important to, you know, showcase our audience as well. So this one, first one that I have is from, Oh my god, I'm gonna butcher this. Let me see the name. Nadin Nadinan Asani. <laughs> Asina. <laughs> okay, can you tell me? <laughs> Nadin. Nadin. Nadin Ana Anasina. Or Nadina. Maybe. Nadina. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> Nadina. There's so many A and N's here, okay? There Nadina are. <laughs> Nanisena. Oh, oh my, my god. Amir. 5316. I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> But which episode she, was that on? Or he wrote Nadine. She, she. I'm gonna say it's she. She wrote, "Love the podcast as usual, as usual." Barakallahu fikum. I did want to mention. I think, as general Muslims in the West, we've really glorified the living in Khaliji country. What a, what living in a Khaliji country is like. So uh, I think that she means by like any Muslim country. Like, we've glorified that in our eyes, and I I feel like we have in a way. Like, there's probably certain things that we just aren't aware of and when we go there you be like oh shoot this is not what i thought it was like and then she continued right say she said my mom was born and raised in qatar and now lives in texas and a bunch of my texan friends now live in the uae i have some qatari friends who are now settled in texas and though muslim oh sorry and although muslim majority countries def have the convenience factor because everything adjusts to ramadan my mom and my friends have mentioned how different the spiritual spirituality aspect is especially if you don't speak arabic mm. and i never thought about that me neither if you don't speak arabic like a lot of the lectures are sp- probably s- spoken in arabic yeah a lot of the like um uh, but it's like that regardless like wherever lessons, muslim yeah. country that you're in like mm-hmm. I've I've had that happen to me in Ethiopia. Okay, yeah, exactly. Like you right? go there and they're giving their uh, Lesson. khutbahs or lessons in Amharic, and, and I'm you just don't like, understand. Yeah, <laughs> so that that can also affect your spirituality because you're like you feel no connection there because you're like, what are they saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then 
Also, she wrote the lectures, Qiyamas, Suhoor events, the intentional international. Uh, international community with masjid iftars all really give a different experience. Amir mentioned when winter fasts all may feel different because they're not as hard and we might not reap the spiritual benefit. I feel kind of the same with living in Western country while fasting. Mm. No, it's not built for us. And yes, I'm fighting for my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fighting for my life every single day, trying not to get fired because of all my naps. But Alhamdulillah, there's so much reward in the extra struggle. That's also something you have to think about, Good right? Reminder, because yeah. you're in a place where things are not catered towards you. That mm -hmm. struggle in itself is rewardable, mm -hmm. right? So, also, we want to be able to take habits and lessons from Ramadan and apply it throughout the year. Fast. This is also another good point. Mm -hmm. If you just go to a different country where everything's centered to catered. your needs, catered to your needs, and then come back to the U.S. after Ramadan, personally, I feel like the struggle, you'll struggle. I'll feel like I'll struggle. Eh. I feel like I'd struggle with more figuring out how I can fit my Ramadan habits into my regular life. So that's another thing we never thought about. Because if you go to a place where everything's catered cater for you, you don't build those habits in a place where you're normally going to be. I was actually thinking of this on my drive over here mm -hmm. um, where I've noticed like some people are doing like destination Eid celebrations where like yeah. the last 10 days they'll go to a Muslim country mm -hmm. and, you know, spend their time doing more ibadah there, which is I'm not going to fault you for it. I yeah. get it. Like, I trust me, I want to do that, too. But I totally see her point with yeah. this, too. See, so that's uh, there's things you don't think about. And I, yeah. thankfully, we have some people with that, both perspectives. For sure, for sure. So, yeah, thank you again for commenting. I'm not going to say the name again. <laughs> <laughs> Nadina or Nadine. Nadina, yeah. Uh, so another comment I had here is, uh, you know, related kind of to the gym thing that I was mentioning um, is Rick June, <laughs> 7365. He said, Assalamu alaikum. Wallah, there's, there has been... There has there has to be Ramadan energy because I normally go to the gym around 4.30 a.m. And I have my three dates and tea as pre-workout and suhoor. And that's when I hit my PRs. PRs are like personal records. I, not I not for you, not for, for the audience. Okay. And, <laughs> and satisfying workouts. You're right. It's barakah. Wallah. So that's actually something. I don't know if I already mentioned it. But like when I'm you working did. out. Yeah. Like I feel like I have this like energy that comes out of nowhere and and maybe that is the barakah of ramadan or it most likely is the barakah of ramadan that's just hitting you because i don't know there's something about it um so yeah thank you again for commenting about that uh rick jun and last comment this is a really long one so i'm sorry it's gonna take a while this is from Hab habitually huda a, a serial commentator or commenter <laughs> 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 and she wrote down Assalamu alaikum. I just need to answer Amir's question real quick before I continue the video so I don't forget. So about breaking our fast at work as part of how it's going to be, I would I would say do not stress. I live in Norway and a couple of years back we broke our fast around 11 p.m. 11 p.m. I can't imagine. That's yeah. when I go to sleep. <laughs> oh, yo, we have one of our chassas out there. So, yeah, yeah well, you know, I'm praying for her, man. Well, and she's close to it. She's not in Norway. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I guess, but isn't it like the same, I guess they're a little bit more north? So actually in the summertime, yeah. I think I told you, right? Like the sun never fully sets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they have to follow like their closest city yeah. that has like normal hours basically. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then she wrote, these last years, has, it has been around 8 to 10 p.m. So inevitably we students and other late night workers broke our fast at work. I can't talk about everyone, but alhamdulillah, I work at a big corporation, Ikea, and they let us get together, all the Muslims, in the cafeteria and even lay out something as to break our fast with, like cookies, fruit, cinnamon so rolls. Nice. I know, right? Shout out to Ikea. Yeah, right? look at them. Oh, when we usually have to pay for, when we usually have to pay for all that. Yeah, they So they put that all for out for free. free for them. And they send out Ramadan Mubarak to the company and ask them to remember that their Muslim colleagues are fasting and to be lenient with us. So, yeah, again, shout out to Ikea for that. Even though it's difficult, it is actually beneficial, I've noticed. The days that we broke our fast with the other co-workers, it was very special. I got to know new people I didn't even know were Muslims and had been working with them for years. Granted, different departments, but still. And this Egyptian uncle that goes around serving everyone dates and another Somali brother letting us try Somali samosas, our bond got so strong during those nights. That is so <laughs> cute. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so you don't think about that. Like, at least... You might be at work, but now you can at least maybe experience it with a more international Muslim um, 
community, right? Yeah. Even though you might do that at the Muslim, now you're doing that work and you can you figure out more about your Muslim coworkers, which is good, right? You should probably get to know your Muslim coworkers a lot more. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's actually very beneficial that we beneficial we never thought about, right? And uh, these days we break our fast on the commute. We're also we're also special. Yes, we didn't get to socialize with family and the good food, but alhamdulillah, just the dates and the lunchbox on the bus made me so grateful for everything. So yeah, you have to be grateful for even the small like blessings that you have, right? Yeah. The fact that you're even able to. I was just gonna say that. You know, give yourself some sustenance or break your fast with something, uh, anything of your choice, right? That's not something that a lot of the people in the world, especially people in Gaza right now, have the choice to do. So even being. Uh, thankful for that is is a, a huge blessing i had time to make serious dua whereas at home i'm busy preparing the table or cooking with mom i'm looking at the desserts and surrounded by noise and everything yeah so i guess when you're by yourself you have more time to kind of do things that distractions wouldn't allow you to do there's a lot of benefit in solitude yeah, so alhamdulillah for both opportunities one last thing, in Iraq, they visit each other after iftar and have time to do tarawih, specifying the women. Men already do that. Uh, and uh, she's just saying, yeah, men already do that, but the women do that as well. And other things at night, because they break their fast before us, so we have always been waiting for shorter days so we can actually do more. Socialize, iftar at the mosque, etc. Without working, without worrying about being so late. So yeah, as long as we will, as long as what? As long as we plan good in Ramadan, Allah will fit with fit, fill it with barakah, inshallah, whether go. it's 4 there p.m. There you go. You know, we struggle a little bit, but you know, Sarah <laughs> took it home for me, okay? But yeah, so <sighs> I guess the overall point to get there is like, just be grateful for any opportunity you have. And yeah, like, for, sure. for the fact that you are able to um, first, yeah, break your fast in good circumstances or not good like in like it, to break your fast um period period yeah right like With whatever you choose yeah you have sustenance exactly, exactly you have the ability to eat your food digest your food like these are yeah. all blessings that we take for granted every day mm -hmm. and so you know i know that the general um the vibe, the atmosphere of Ramadan this year, I think a lot of people started it with heavy hearts given mm -hmm. just the, the overall climate of what's happening mm -hmm. in Palestine and Sudan, Gaza, Sudan and yeah. like all of the Muslims that are being um, impacted this year. Mm -hmm. A lot of us feel that heavy heartedness. And yeah. so um, just remember, like, we never want to be so hopeless that we're like facing disparity every mm -hmm. single day. You always want to have faith in your creator, right? Like yeah. Allah has the Lord of all the worlds, like truly what we think is impossible is possible for him. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're grateful for the blessings and the endowments that you have and you continue to make dua, like you should never lose hope. Yeah. And so. that's something I hope you guys can take away from this episode as well. I hope so. Yeah. So Inshallah. again, thank you guys for commenting. Yeah. Uh, if you guys have any opinions or want to reply to anything we said in this podcast, make sure to leave that in the comments as well. Other than that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You know, we're trying to hit 10K, inshallah, uh, or even 7K right now, inshallah, yeah. you know, um, or and follow us on all our social medias, you know, Cousin Connection Pod on basic TikTok, Instagram, all those places. And inshallah, you have a very happy Eid. 